Okay, I think we're going to go get started now. So thanks, folks, for sitting around uh, waiting for this last talk. It's a beautiful day outside, um, but um, hopefully it'll, this will be worth your while. So I'm going to talk about pop-up commerce. And uh, if you go back to the um, presentation this morning, the keynote talk this morning, um, uh, Marshall Cohen talked about uh, retail commerce. And he talked about how the effect of, the effect of gas prices, the effect of uh, you know, the weather conditions on shopping. And if you look at typical shopping uh, in the retail market, about 25 to 40% of the shopping happens around the holidays. And when I talk about holidays, it's really the 60-day period in November and December um, covering Thanksgiving and the New Year's. And if you add to that some of these other major events like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, etc., it covers a big part of shopping. So basically, if you took, take the entire year, there are periods of uh, um, events that become really, really important. And so the rest of the talk is going to be about these things, these periods, shorter periods, um, that are going to be important for shopping purposes and how we discover them. So let me give you some examples from the offline space. So Target in 2004 uh, realized the importance of the holiday season, and then they created a floating store on the Hudson River. So this floating store showed up uh, in the month of December. It lasted exactly a month, and they had some designers come in and uh, do specific products for the holidays, and it was, they created a unique shopping experience. If you, uh, there is another company named Vacant. Uh, what Vacant does is it goes to these mall areas and looks for uh, empty shopping spaces, and they set up shows, uh, sh shops that appear for a few, uh, few days and then they disappear after that. So in New York City, they set up this Rockport uh, pop-up store. In Santa Monica, they set up a K-Swiss pop-up shop. Um, in Glasgow Airport, they set up a plane shop. And in the plane shop, what happens is every few days, they change the brand. So you go to the shop today, you see a certain brand of products. You go back a few days later, you see a different brand of products and so on. And in Shanghai, they set up this BMW Mini Vacant, which is basically an extended mini in which they had interesting products. And this van would go around the city, and um, it will have interesting products. And if you miss the van, you miss the shop. So these are shops that Vacant, Vacant most of the time, what they do is that they should do it around a brand like K-Swiss or Rockport. And these are shops that appear and then disappear again um, uh, for, in a certain place or for a certain period of time. Now, eBay back in 2004 did an eBay show house in New York City. And what they did was they gave eight designers $100,000. And they had to purchase furnishings and accessories, and they basically created a store of these things. And all of these furnishings were resold on eBay online. So this was actually the first connection between offline and online that eBay made back in 2004. And you hear over and over again in this conference people talking about connecting offline and online. eBay had tried this out very successfully back in 2004. Um, 2009, they created a eBay again created a marketplace in uh, New York City, and it, again this store showed up during the holidays and um, uh, had eBay kind of stuff, and they disappeared at the end of the holidays. So um, there are other pop-up examples like Target sets up pink pop-up retail. Basically, they created a store which is everything is pink in the store. And um, uh, J.C. Penney created a Steve Madden uh, pop-up store, and Levi's created a spa bus. So you get the point here. These are things that move around, things that are available for a short period of time, and things um, create a certain experience that you don't typically see in a store that is sitting, sticking, sticking around all the time. So what, what is the real philosophy, or what is the real theme behind pop-up retails? They pop up unannounced. They don't tell you that they're going to uh, uh, be around for a long time. They quickly draw crowds, and they, they disappear or morph into something else at the end of the period at which the, the, uh, the, the, sh the shopping period. So there are some economics behind this pop-up retail. There is this notion of mass exclusivity. It is basically, it is for everybody, but at the same time, anybody who goes to the store thinks it's exclusive for them because they're based upon a certain theme. Um, there is this planned spontaneity. So these, you see these oxymorons here. It is all planned, but at the same time, it gives to the consumer the sense of being spontaneous. It looks like it just came up out of nowhere, and so this consumer has a sense of serendipity when they shop in these places. So it has this notion of surprise economics here. And it creates a different experience, uh, different from a typical store that you go to and there is an aisle for a certain thing, there's another aisle for a different thing, and so on. And also there's a notion of scarcity, because if you don't shop then, it, it, will, it is going to disappear, and so it creates a sense of urgency in you. So that's kind of the whole notion around this pop-up retail offline. So I'm going to connect from, I'll go from offline to online. So to give, set up the background, I want to 
give you a little bit of information about what we do at eBay Research Labs. One of the big things we do is data science, and actually it's big data science. We mine you know, all the data that's available off of eBay, which is query data, session data, transaction data, image data, and so on, and we look at this data, and we build algorithms, systems, applications, and experiences based upon all of these data. <clears throat> so <clears throat> one of these things is going to, I'm going to drive towards a pop-up pop commerce. So what is the science behind a pop-up pop commerce? So we want to first understand demand. So what do we need to do uh, to understand demand? Basically, to understand demand, we want to leverage our data. So we use demand as in user queries. When users come in and type in queries on eBay, that is a predictor of demand on eBay. Right? So we want to take this demand or this, this queries that eBay type, uh, users type in and use that as a predictor for market properties. And <clears throat> we are looking at large amounts of data. So for, just to give you some examples, we are looking at four to six terabytes of user session data per day. And we're looking at 150 plus million sessions, over 10,000 event types, and hundreds of millions of users, right? And we track them over years. And so since the time we have been tracking, I'll show you some graphs, how long we have been tracking them, and what do we see in this data, and how that translates to pop-up experience. And we mine it over a distributed platform like Hadoop, and because of which we can mine this really, really fast, and we can mine it in a very um, uh, um, uh, reliable way, okay? so. You take the query like Christmas, and I show you a graph of Christmas over five years. If you look at this graph, you see that <clears throat> you know, every year around December, this, the, the query pops um, somewhere in the beginning of December to end of December, 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, and 11. You see that 2009 was a weak Christmas, obviously, because it was recession, uh, and so people shopped less. They came looking for fewer things. I, I'm just looking for the query Christmas, not, nothing more than that. Um, another example, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving peaks somewhere between October and November, year after year after year. Now, 2009, uh, 2008, uh, nine period was again weak as compared to uh, before or after that. Uh, look at Easter. Again, it pops between March and April. You look at Mother's Day. Uh, just it's, it's a narrower pop. It happens sometime around uh, end of April and early May when people shop for Mother's Day stuff. Uh, look at Father's Day. It has a similar pop around the beginning of June um, to middle of June. Now, if you compare Mother's Day to Father's Day, you can see that Mother's Day is a lot more popular than Father's Day. Um, so, you know, we all tend to buy more gifts for our mothers than our our fathers, or we care about them more. But if you look around the period of 2008 or 2009, you see that, you know, we actually cared about our dads as well. So maybe it was recession time, and we were more worried. We were, many of us went back to live with their parents, and so we bought them gifts. Could be, you can interpret it any which way. But the point I'm trying to make here is that data tells you this kind of story that, you know, you cannot otherwise glean um, uh, from elsewhere. So if you can look at data carefully and in a detailed manner, you can actually gather a lot of information that's useful for you to design applications. That's a, uh, that's a point I want to drive home. Uh, if you look at Halloween, you get again see these pops that happen around October, November period. Um, I type in the query back to school between July and September. Again, there is a huge uh, demand for back to school stuff. And all I'm doing is I just type in these queries and our system that mines this data over years and sees us periodically every year during that period, you see these things come and then they disappear at the end of the period. So it tells you that if you want to set up a store of this kind, this is a period for which it is important. Outside of that period, it's fairly useless. Right? So, and if you look at the details of this, you can, I can actually tell you how long this store has to last, somewhere end of June to beginning of October, and after which point, it's, you know, there's no back to school stuff to be sold. Super Bowl, again, you go it, somewhere in the end of January to early February, and it depends who's playing the finals, whether, you know, and where the finals are held, if it's Miami or Phoenix or Tampa or Dallas, and who the finalists are, accordingly, you know, either it's really interesting to people, people want to shop more, or people want to shop less. So it's not only the time, it's also the participants in this game who decide how big this store has to be or how, how, how important it is to be. And again, year after year, because the different teams are participating and different locations uh, it's being held at, we don't know how long a Super Bowl pop-up will last because, uh, for example, if you look at 2008, it started somewhere in mid-February, uh, mid-January, and ended early February right after the games are over. Whereas if you look at 2011, it actually lasted much longer. I mean, I don't follow uh, football, so I don't really know what these teams do and w why one team is more important than others, but those of you who do follow might be able to say, aha, I know why um, uh, the demand for uh, Super Bowl memorabilia lasted till end of uh, February or early March in one year and not in another year. 
But the data tells you a lot of story that you cannot otherwise get um, from elsewhere, right? I typed in this query called ugly sweater. How many people know about ugly sweaters? Two. So ugly sweater was this thing that became uh, extremely popular a couple of years ago. Wall Street Journal carried an article on it. And basically, I guess some, some guy in Wisconsin put up the picture of his mom wearing this printed um, um, like red and green sweater with uh, you know, uh, pearls or, or um, you know, all kinds of decorations in them. And it became really, really popular. And people started holding ugly sweater parties where you go to a Christmas party and you know, who is wearing the ugliest sweater? Now, this story started four or five years ago. So if you go back to look at 2007, it wasn't that popular. But at the same time, somebody had started this thing. But as you go on year after year after year, it's getting more and more and more, more popular. Because now, now that I've told 100 people here that ugly sweater is popular, probably you're going to go tell your friends. And this Christmas, guess what? It's going to spike, it's spike even more, right? So basically, you know, new kinds of things appear, even though it's, we're talking about Christmas. The shopping is, uh, happens around some other things that happens externally, like some guy coming up with a theme that's related to an event or a, a celebration or a festival that's happening on a regular basis. <coughs> so I mean, we, what we're talking about so far has been things that happen year after year after year. What about things just randomly happen? So let me give you some examples of, of things that we mind. So September 16th. Um, uh, something that uh, uh, our mining algorithm figured out, uh, the brand Missoni. Everybody knows about the brand Missoni? So Target launched a brand named Missoni. It was basically an Italian designer who was asked to design um, um, you know, bicycles and, and, and shoes and dresses. You can see the typical patterns on these. They're kind of these wavy uh, uh, angular patterns. And um, there was, uh, in different Target stores across the country, there was mayhem because people tried to get in the store and get the limited merchandise. And you know, within hours, all of them were gone. A day later, or two days later, eBay had 37,000 Missoni items to be sold. So suddenly, it popped up online. So these people were buying. They were actually reselling on eBay. All of a sudden, an online store appeared out of an offline phenomena that nobody had expected. Right? Um, there are uh, other things pop, like where the wild things are. Basically, this, uh, uh, this movie that came out, and you know, um, everything around the movie became popular. It lasts for a while, and then it disappears. Um, gourmet, the Gourmet magazine, they ended, uh, or the, the last edition was, uh, they, they shut down the business, and the last edition was somewhere around October 2009. Everybody wanted, uh, all of a sudden, these magazines, which were selling for $5, became super collectible, and the whole community of people collecting Gourmet magazines showed up online. They were looking for, first place they come to is eBay. They come here, look for this stuff, and they try and buy and sell them. So all of a sudden, they started appearing on eBay. There was a huge pop-up. That happened for Gourmet Magazine on eBay. <clears throat> um, another game, the uh, Duke Nukem, that um, uh, I think the game was released again, and that popped up around that time, September 5, 2011. Jeffrey Campbell, this was fall season. Jeffrey Campbell uh, came up with, uh, so it's a shoe designer, came with a certain design of shoes. It turned out that that for particular fall season, which is actually this fall season, in September, uh, that brand of shoes are very popular. All of a sudden, everybody's looking for Jeffrey Campbell shoes, and that's going to, I mean, this was a graph that I uh, picked up a few days ago. I, I don't know how long it's going to last. Okay, so if you look at it, you also see these bursts, and the bursts have very different shapes. So some of them pop up, and within a couple of days, they disappear. Others pop up and last for a few longer days, and some of them pop for and become a trend. So they, 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 uh, we classify them, they actually we name them, and we name them according to uh, the shapes of Canadian, uh, anybody Canadian here? Um, uh, Canadian uh, mountain peaks, so Dogtooth and Hogback and Cuesta and Matterhorn, they are actually shapes of Canadian peaks, and uh, we, Depending upon the shape of the pop, we give them these, uh, these names. And some examples are, uh, of these are Simpson and iPhone. They turn out to be Matterhorn uh, pops. And uh, you know, LeBron James um, or Alex Rodriguez, these are uh, uh, you know, sports celebrities. And they, turn, they have different shapes. Perfume bottles and longer burger baskets are dog tooths and, and so on. So it kind of uh, depending upon what it is, whether it's a brand, whether it's a product being launched, whether it's a celebrity, whether the celebrity does something uh, funky, uh, you see different shapes of these pops as well. Um, so basically, we detect the burst from this data, and we look for the change in volume over time. And this is a very well-studied problem in the other space. You know, people who have studied um, um, uh, uh, 
Wavelets and Fourier transforms know uh, these techniques are used to find kind of st study time series uh, kind of data. And that's exactly what we are doing here, except that we are doing it for commerce data. And we're taking those things and we're translating them to applications for commerce. <clears throat> So this is kind of the architecture of our system. We have a regular stream of incoming data. We got hundreds of uh, um, um, over 100 million queries coming in every day. And we basically mine this data. And we have a platform for, uh, for mining these things. And we, we, we detect the bursts in these systems. And uh, we, have, uh, we use an algorithm which is based on two-state automaton. I won't go into the details of that. And we remove noise from these things. And we basically find these shapes. And we say, hey, this is a pop-up store. So uh, here's one example, Paris Hilton. You know, she's generally a popular celebrity, but every so often she does something funny. So, uh, you know, uh, there's a few pops that happen, and then she goes back to being um, unnoticed, and then she does something else again. Again, she becomes popular and so on. Whereas a game like Wii, which is generally popular, you don't see any, any uh, unless a new, new uh, version is launched, you don't see anything um, uh, unique in, in, in there. So. Basically, what do, we, uh, what do we want to do from here? We, we want to de detect these things, and we want to see if we can set up stores or we set themed stores related to these. So we look at different sources of data. So one thing we look for is, you know, so far the examples I showed were queries like just Christmas, queries like you know, um, um, Paris Hilton. Uh, but you know, just one query is not going to give you the entire theme for that store. So we want to look at queries that are structurally similar to these queries, or semantically similar to these queries. So for example, if it is Halloween, pumpkin is kind of related to Halloween. Or if I say Halloween, Halloween dress, or Halloween costume, or Halloween decorations are related to Halloween. So there are all these relational, either it is structural or semantic relations have to be in mind. And second thing we are going to do is that we are going to look at temporal similarities. So which means what else uh, uh, has the same shape around that period of time. And then see whether it is related to the thing that we're talking about. And third thing is we're going to actually uh, take advantage of our own users. I'll talk about crowdsourcing in a different way, where we have EBS over 200 million users. How do we take advantage of the behavior of the users to kind of discover these themes? So these are the three areas in which I'm going to focus on. So. For structural and sem semantic similarities, we, uh, we want to mine linguistic relation between the queries. And for behavioral similarities or the semantic similarities, we're going to look at same session queries. So a user types in a query and then does something else and types another query. And we say, hey, these two queries are typed in within about the same period of time, which means they are likely to be related. And we're going to say there's a relationship between these two queries. So the user comes in and types in um, Christmas presents and then uh, a few clicks later types in ugly sweater, then we know that ugly sweater is related to Christmas uh, gifts. Uh, and so we might be able to tie them together. And then once we get this data, we kind of remove robots and noise and stuff like that. We have to dedo the sessions because many times robots come and they just you know, o o over overburden the system and they create these signals that are artificial. So we want to remove them out of the system as well. So once we do that, I'm going to give you some examples of these structural and semantic similarities. So for example, if you look at the query Halloween, um, you see that um, there is um, stuff like uh, um, you know, Halloween DVDs, uh, Halloween vintage, um, uh, Halloween ribbons are related to that. But you also see things like Michael Myers, pumpkin, and witch. These are, they don't have the same terms in them, but at the same time, um, they have strong relationship to the Halloween query. So we know that when during around Halloween time, people come look for pumpkins or Michael Myers costumes and stuff like that. So you know that we need to add them to the theme store that you're building. Um, same thing if you look at Christmas. You've got Christmas DVD and vintage Christmas here. But um, there are also Christmas trees and Christmas lights and fabrics and so on that people come looking for. Um, there's another one for Mother's Day. And um, uh, if you look at Mother's Day here, um, you see Mother's, Burg Mother's Day Longer Burger staff necklace is something that's often people give to their mother. So you see, actually, not only it shows up, it shows up with a very, very strong signal for Mother's Day. Okay. So this was the structural part we were talking about. Let me uh, say a few words about the temporal similarity of queries. So what we're going to do with temporal is that we're going to look at these query graphs, and we we'll, we'll look at time frame, and see do these queries have the same shape within that time frame. So. <clears throat> One of the challenges with queries is that they're very short. Their typical queries are two and a half, three words long at best. 
And so linguistic measures are not going to help us a lot identifying relationship between these things. And even the behavioral measures are so sparse and so noisy that it's not going to establish, find a relationship between these queries. So we, we decided we'll go look at the temporal dimension, which means uh, things that happen around the same time, and see if we can enforce any relationship between these uh, queries. So. Uh, basically, again, we, we look at all of these multi-years volumes of queries. We have a bus detection engine that goes, sorry. Um, and, um, uh, and we identify these bursty queries. And then there are some that occur periodically and others that are non-periodic. So periodic ones are things like Hanukkah and Super Bowl. Non-periodic things are things like Royal Wedding, which happens, hopefully happen only, only once in a while, or Justin Bieber when he cuts his hair and starts listing them on eBay. So that becomes a one-time event. If he does it every month, that's not going to be very interesting. And then we cluster these co-occurring bursty queries along, along the, the time dimension. And Basically, we use that to uh, create our experience. So here are some examples of co-occurring bursty queries, which means things that happen around the same time. So if you take Valentine's Day, uh, you see Valentine's wreath, primitive Valentine's, Valentine's card, but you also see Vermont teddy bears. So all of a sudden, you know that Vermont teddy bears are quite likely to be gifts given around Valentine's Day time. Kind of makes sense. Or if you look at back to school, you've got back to school, LLB in backpack, girls backpack, but you also see TI-83 and TI-84. These are calculators that people buy around back to school time. So this tells you that calculators are important things that people buy for back to school. So if you're building a back to school experience, you need to add calculators to, to that experience. Or for Halloween, there's a whole bunch of costumes, but in addition to costume, there's black tutu, which is some kind of a black dress. I don't, I don't know what, what it's used for, but clown mask and, um, you know, peanut pumpkin carols, these are very closely related to Halloween. So all of a sudden your theme is now expanded and um, you have kind of a better experience around Halloween. So now the temporal things, you know, you're looking at all these time series graphs. These are, uh, these, these are expensive operations to do because, you know, we, as I said, we got millions and millions of queries and we have years and years of data as well we are processing. So if you're just, if you try and do it in a naive way, these tend to be quadratic, which basically means they are very, very expensive to do. So one of the challenges, technical challenges, is to do it in a way that's actually, we can compute them. Not only we can compute them, we can compute them very, very quickly, and we can actually enhance the experience based upon that. So I'm not going to go into the details of the algorithms. I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to give you some more examples. So let's look at Halloweens and look at, look, look at the graphs for queries around Halloweens and talk about the results from our algorithms. So what do they look like? And um, the Halloween query, the Shrek, our, our algorithm identifies that Shrek costume, Little Mermaid costume, and these are just examples. There's a lot more queries around this as well. And which shoes are about the same shape as the Halloween queries, which basically tells you if you, I'm looking at just a temporal direction or dimension, I can combine all of these things into a single experience around Halloween, right? Or if I'm looking at Christmas, around Christmas you see that Santa suits, fair dress, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and all have similar shapes, and so they are probably around the same theme. So I can bucket all of them together if I want to build a certain experience uh, around Christmas. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples around you know, structural and temporal uh, relationships. So um, if you, I, I gave you this example before of Halloween and uh, Halloween mask and perfume and props and stuff like that. And if you look at the right-hand side around Halloween, it's hard to read over there. But you got things like, uh, as I showed you before, Shrek, co Shrek costume and you know, witch shoes and um, uh, so on related to Halloween on the temporal dimension. Or if you look at uh, the query gap, which is, not a, which is not an event or a holiday, it is just a brand, you see in the structural or the semantic relationship, you see things like um, uh, gap 4T, gap 6, and gap boho. But on the right hand side, actually, you see, even though these are very complex graphs, they have about the same shape. What you see is, you know, Abercrombie Fitch and um, 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 Levi jeans and so on and so forth, a leather jacket and Levi jeans. And another thing you can tell is that they peak around the summertime, which basically means that people go shopping around summer for these brands of items together. So if you want to build a certain experience around these brands for that period of time, you know what, how these brands are related, and you can build an, ex uh, it's an online store experience which connects these brands together. Okay. Um, so 
for the la last part, which is what I was saying, you know, the Robiner approach, which is taking advantage of our users or crowdsourcing from our users, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about eBay and long tail. I mean, uh, probably everybody has read the long tail book, um, and eBay is one of the best long tail stories out there. Which basically, uh, what you want to get out of that is that, you know, if you look, if you take off our seller base, which is you know, uh, uh, 30 million or so sellers. You know, very few of the sellers account for a large number of products and categories, and a lot of sellers account for very few products and categories. And very few sellers account for a lot, lot of money that are spent uh, on eBay, but at the same time, a lot of sellers individually contribute very little amount spent on eBay. And um, so, uh, ordered together, it becomes important, but individually, they are not that important. And same with sellers with volume and revenue. So you combine any of these things, products and users, you see these long tail patterns. And what I want to uh, talk about here is so there are a few users who know a lot about the business or a lot about eBay and a lot of users who need help shopping on eBay. So these few users are what we call as power users. So these power users make heavy use of advanced queries. I mean, they use advanced queries because they are looking for good deals, they know what they're looking for, and they save these queries, and they keep them around, and they repeatedly come back and, and use them over and over again. They save them, they watch them, and these give us extremely strong signals to kind of find relationship between queries. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how, uh, how we use it, or examples of these things. So the first one is Christmas, and around Christmas you can see that these are all the advanced queries. We have ranked them by some scores here, so ignore the score on the right-hand side. But at the same time, you can see that uh, there are queries like Christmas Vintage, uh, Christmas Modern, and so on, and Nightmare Before Christmas. These are all queries. Some of these are fairly complex, like Artificial Christmas Query, Christmas Ornaments, Santa Cookie Jar. The, this user has saved these queries as a complex query. And you can look at it, and the user is basically telling you that these things are related, and they're related to the same theme. So, and, and hence, if you want to build an experience around Christmas, you have to use all of these things. And because these are power buyers, you know that they are doing the right thing, and they know what they are doing. Um, if, you, if you look at Halloween, you see the same thing. You, know, you see things like Halloween costume and costumes, but at the same time, look at some of these complex queries over there. Halloween postcards, minus a pro, minus modern, minus ticket. So they build these really complex, explicit queries, save them, repeatedly use them over and over again. And we, 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 because we mine them, we save them, and we track them, we can use that to actually build an experience to enhance the quality of the stores that, you're, that we are building around the Halloween theme. Right? So basically what we do here is that we take the structural aspects of the queries, we take the semantic aspect of the queries, we take the temporal aspect of the queries, and then we steal from these or we mine from these power buyers who know what they're doing by doing these advanced queries, and then we put all of them together and build, a, build an experience for a store. So, um, and actually, something happened here. Let me skip over this. Um, it's supposed to be an animation. I lost my animation. Um, for the stores, um, let me show this. So as we automatically mine, mine, mine these queries, we see these interesting stores here. So snow, snow, snow goose decoys, now these pop up, and there's a theme that gets built around February, because people are, I don't know why, uh, people are looking for snow goose decoys around February, and there's a community around people collecting various kinds of snow goose decoys. These are wooden ducks, they look like real ducks, and people collect them, they talk about them, and, they build a, and you can build a store. Pond liners are another one. And spring wreath. There are collectors of spring wreaths around March time. So these are things that you don't expect. In March, you think, oh, it's going to be you know, uh, Easter or whatever. But people collect these, and then they talk about them. And guess what? The data tells us that they do, do that, and we can automatically build these experiences. Luau party happens around May. Um, so people go look for you know, glasses, cups, and mugs, and so on and so forth that are related to this Luau party. Moral mushrooms, uh, people look for these moral mushrooms uh, around the uh, end of May, June period of time. There's a, whole bunch, there's a whole community that appears around May, disappears. Uh, later on. Now, guess what? We didn't know about it. The data told us this exists. Um, uh, Vox GT. This is, again, you can tell why, because uh, people start trimming their lawn um, around uh, June time, and this seems to appear year after year after year. People are looking for these products around this period of time. Um, Brer Fest is another one of these things. <clears throat> Hunting clothes. This appears around uh, July, August time frame, again, you can say that towards the later part of the summer, people are looking for hunting clothes. There are all kinds of designer clothes that people look for, and you can become, build a pop-up store just around hunting clothes and hunting gear around that period of time, right? Kovichan is a brand of sweater. Come holiday time, people 
are collecting COVID chan sweater, buying them, gifting them, and so on. Um, that's that's uh, another store that automatically pops up. Leg lamp. Uh, people know about leg lamps? Um, so leg lamp was, uh, I guess it was, what was the movie? It was something about Christmas. Um, so leg lamps were made popular. It was um, um, suddenly, uh, you, you would not, it's nothing religious about leg lamps. Uh, but at the same time, around Christmas time, people come looking for leg lamps. They collect leg lamps and they, uh, so again, this appeared from the data and you can, you can think of an experience of buying and selling and collecting leg lamps around Christmas time. So what I wanted to show here is that apart from the typical stores that you see of Halloween's and, uh, and uh, Valentine's Day and uh, Easter, you see these other ones which happen year after year after year, but completely unexpected or completely, I mean, you and I will not have guessed that these are experiences that should come for that same period of time when there is a holiday that's going to happen around that time and people enjoy enjoy um, you know, shopping around these themes. Okay? Um, another one is wedding centerpieces. And so this was kind of the one unexpected ones. The expected ones are you know, like you've got the Orange Bowl, Chinese New Year, Valentine's Day, Grammy Awards, <clears throat> you know, Final Four, Mardi Gras, you know, Easter, Cinco de Mayo, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Back to School, Homecoming, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas and back to Orange Bowl again. And all of them were automatically mined. So you are, we, we can automatically get these things, uh, the ones that are expected from the data, and also the ones that were not expected from, from the data um, uh, show up, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to show you examples of the, store that, the stores that were built. So here was an uh, Mardi Gras store that, was, that we built for basic, uh, taking the advantage of the data and just looking at what pops up around that Mardi Gras period of time. And all of these themes up about like masks and gest gestures and decorations, boas, beads, these are the things that people come looking for. So all of a sudden now you have an experience of a store that, you know, it's, it's, it's eBay. It's all of the inventory is on eBay, but at the same time it's a vertical experience uh, just around Mardi Gras, just for that period of time. It comes and goes and it's just, just on the topic. And that's basically what people come looking for. So you don't have to go and source it. People have already voted through their feet saying that this is what we want, right? Um, Thanksgiving, again, typical eBay. You see things like decors and uh, stuff for dining rooms, iconic characters, kitchen and dining, and so on. St. Patrick's Day, there's another pop-up store that appears around uh, St. Patrick's Day time. And again, you've got things like, um, in the typical eBay fashion, you've got inflatables and tablecloths and longer burger stuff related to the St. Patrick's Day theme. Um, Easter, um, you've got a similar store there. Valentine's Day, You've got another store that pops up with a similar team. The nice thing about these things is most of these stores, uh, or most part of these stores are automatically mined, automatically created. These, um, these uh, widgets were automatically created. Um, one of the things that popped up early this year, last year, was uh, the royal wedding. Uh, this year, around uh, royal wedding, around April, uh, when the wedding happened. So at that time, we were looking at not just data from the US, but also UK and other uh, former um, colonies uh, of the UK. So this was a US store. So what do people in the US care about? Why, what do they care about as, as, when it's related to um, royal wedding? They typically buy cups and mugs and magnets and stuff like that. What do the British guys do? Around, uh, they, they look for cake toppers, costumes, uh, tea cozies, and uh, you know, thimbles. So it's the same theme, but if you're British, you're going to look for something else. If you're American, if you're going to look something else, and so on. Even in Ireland, they had a, a store popped up around the royal wedding, and they were looking for uh, certain classes of items that were different from what the Americans and the British were looking for. Okay? So it also has a geographical significance. And this was a pop store that popped just very recently. And so with some little bit of hand editing, we created this store. And the nice thing about eBay is that um, it's not, not, you know, many things that are sold on eBay are not new. So the, a theme that I, actually one of the members of my team, Karine, uh, she, uh, she found out that a lot of the stuff that gets bought and sold around Halloween turn, turn out to be used. Um, so let me see if I can go into the site here to show what it does. Um, oops, okay, looks like I can't, can't play with this. Let me go back. Let 
may not do it. I don't know why it's not working. So uh, you, a lot of used items. I, I'll send you the URLs later on. You can go and check out the site. A lot of them are used costumes and used stuff that people go for. So you can create a green Halloween by buying used costumes from other people. Um, so we, so far, we talked about mostly time-based things. But you, know, you also see that these time-based stores or these time-based pop-ups have a theme around them. right? So if you're an enthusiast, if you're, uh, we talked about ugly, ugly sweaters or moral mushrooms, you can create theme pages, and you can attract these familiar strangers who are interested in the same phrases or the same topics, but at the same time, you're not familiar to that. So we are kind of going from interests of people to people with similar interests. So we are kind of going from you know, uh, interest-based store to kind of social stores, right? So I'm going to give you an example of Harry Potter, which if you look at Harry Potter every so often, like 2007 and 2009, it popped. And 2009, it popped because um, one of the Harry Potter movies was released around that time, and same thing about 2007. So, but it, it is an existing, it's got an existing fan base, but every so often when something happens around Harry Potter, these things pop, right? So if you look at the query network for uh, Harry Potter, you see you know, that Harry Potter books and movies, but also names of the movies that are related to this and you know, action figures and so on. So this is what the structure and semantics tell you. And if you look at the advanced queries, it gives you the details of what people exactly look for around Harry Potter. Right? And uh, you, we have, what we have in the labs is a tool that will help you combine all of these queries and put together in a tool. And at the end of it, you can actually come up with a store which is completely Harry Potter-based uh, theme. So Hot Blood Prince or Deadly Hallows, and these are all modules that can be automatically populated from, from the queries that you have mined. Right? So this was a, a store that popped, which is um, put together actually by one of the guys, Gyanit, and my team. It was around Diwali, which happens to be the Festival of Colors in India. And um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to click through to the URL for whatever reason. But um, uh, this is a store with dresses and lamps and accessories related to these dresses. And it is very, very easy to put together. In 15 minutes, you can put together a store and you can decorate it. And you can go down further and you can share it with your Facebook friends and um, uh, make it a social as well. So I'm going to uh, point you to a bunch of tools that are available on the lab site. So if you go to labs.ebay.com slash pop-up store, you can find these tools that help you put together this store. Also, we have a whole bunch of APIs which give you feeds for, uh, for these queries that pop. And you can take these queries and build into an experience that, that you can come up with. Um, and so please visit these sites, and you can get more information on these sites. And uh, I want to thank the team that actually worked, did the hard work. So I'm just standing here and giving the talk, but there's a whole team of people, Evan, Karin, Nish, and Gyanit, who worked on these projects. We're all in the audience as well. So I'm going to stop right there. If you have any questions, I'll take them. What's that? Yeah, sure. Any questions? Okay. Okay, thank you.